because we got a lot of big news to talk about with those Baltimore Ravens. But the newest Baltimore Ravens fan, the newest member of Team Keep It Clean should be here literally any day now because my wife and I are expecting our second child, first daughter, and she is going to be born here yeah, within the next week, maybe less, maybe a tiny bit more, but she should be here really soon. And I just got to thank Team Keep It Clean for showing support along these last eight, nine months. It feel like we just made the announcement the other day and now she's getting ready to be here. So I appreciate y'all a lot. Now, in another important date tomorrow, it starts the Baltimore Ravens mandatory. See, now now we can use that word. It ain't voluntary no more. It starts that mandatory mini camp uh, for the next three days, June 11th, 12th, and 13th. Every single Baltimore Ravens player has to be in the building. Now, let me tell you what's important about those dates. They have to show up tomorrow and for the next uh, three days. But then after that, it's like, Sign sayonara. See you when you get back because they won't be back after that until training camp. And that's like late July, so they're going to get a nice long vacation. But then when they come back, it's competition time, baby. It ain't no more oh, non-padded practice. No, it's real then because that's when players start to earn their spots on the roster. That's when players start to earn whether they're going to be a starter or they're going to be a backup. They're going to be primarily special teams or you're going to get some more time on offense, defense, whatever the case may be. Training camp is when it gets real. Now, something else that's real is the rivalry between not just the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Baltimore Ravens, but between John Harbaugh and Mike Tomlin. They've been going at it for years now. It's been a really, really long time, and it's been fun. They've had some epic matchups against each other. Recently, Mike Tomlin been getting John Harbaugh a lot. I don't even really remember the last time we beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's, it's been a while. But anyway, um, that rivalry doesn't seem like it's going anywhere anytime soon because the Pittsburgh Steelers have signed Mike Tomlin, who has continuously called out John Harbaugh saying that the Ravens team don't play a full fourth quarter, that they are, he knows what to expect when it comes to them. But they signed him to a three-year extension. So Mike Tomlin, he, he ain't going nowhere. So Harbaugh and them Ravens, they're going to have to figure this thing out. But they got an additional couple of years to figure this thing out. But something that Jamison Hensley pointed out is that Mike Tomlin uh, is the longest tenured head coach in the NFL and is one of only three coaches with their current team for at least 10 years. Oof, that's something right there. Because, of course, Bill Belichick, when he retired or got fired, all the above, whatever, uh, then Mike Tomlin, he stepped into that longest tenured coach role. But who are the other two? Well, the others, John Harbaugh, he's been with the Ravens since 2008, and Andy Reid, he's been with the Chiefs since 2013. And it's funny, but something that we talked about like about a month and a half ago is that with John Harbaugh, those are the two coaches that he struggles with the most. Is it a coincidence that they both the other longest tenured coaches in the league? I think not. When you're building a roster, you got to search far and wide to bring in people that you know can make your team that much better. And that's exactly what the Baltimore Ravens have been doing. And at pass rush, at defensive end, at outside linebacker, they got some guys there. Kyle Vannoy, Adafi Away, David Ajabo, Tavius Robinson, Adisa Isaac, uh, and more. But there's still a lot of question marks there. There's still a lot of unknowns there. So why not bring in somebody to try to add to the mix, even if it's just for a tryout, just to see what they've got. And that's exactly what the Baltimore Ravens are doing because they hosted D.C. Defenders defensive end Malik Fisher uh, for a tryout. And that was supposed to happen today. I'm sure we'll find out very, very soon exactly how that went. Now, a read-up on Fisher said that he spent the past two years with the D.C. Defenders across both the XFL and the post-merger UFL. In the inaugural UFL season earlier this year, listen to this, he racked up 33 total tackles, seven tackles for a loss, and seven sacks, which was the second most in the league. So he was over there, and he was productive, Ravens seen that, and they said, hey, show us what you got. Now, it says prior. Oh, and he had a forced fumble and a fumble recovery. But it says also prior to joining the defenders, Fisher spent five seasons playing college at uh, Villanova. He's six foot three, 262 pounds, uh, and he racked up all in total 123 total tackles, 33 and a half tackles for loss, and 22 sacks and nine forced fumbles for the Wildcats. So, with the Baltimore Ravens offering him a tryout, they're hoping that he brings all of that production and more to Baltimore. 
a play in the NFL that can be very productive uh, for teams is the kickoff return. And with those kickoff returns, they can go crazy because that allows your team to either get really great field position or it can go really bad uh, or even a touchdown. It, it, you could score off a kickoff return. But with the new kickoff rules, it's expected to get a lot more physical, especially for those kickers who are on the back end of the play. And our own Justin Tucker... He said that, all right, since the rules are changing a bit, you know what? I'm going to get a little bit more swollen. He said he added about four pounds of muscle just because he may have to go head up with somebody. And if you remember, if you recall, Justin Tucker, he ain't afraid to go head up with nobody. He ain't afraid to make a tackle. He ain't afraid to drop the shoulder. So with a stronger, even stronger Justin Tucker, man, just imagine, like, I could see with him adding some more muscle weight, I could see him trying to hit a 75-yard field goal. And him probably getting it, too, because he already got a foot. He already got a boot. So imagine his foot right now, the most accurate kicker in NFL history, with an even stronger leg. Let's just hope that that accuracy don't drop off. Now, we have mini camp coming up tomorrow, and then in about a month and change, we got training camp on the way, and there's a lot of roster spots that are still up for grabs right now on the Baltimore Ravens. And Jeff Zrebic, he highlighted a lot of those spots and some guys who are the favorites at those spots. Uh, one of those was the final one or two wide receiver spots. He said the competitors are Malik Cunningham, Deontay Hardy, Kadir Ishmael, uh, Tavion Robinson, Sean Ryan, Dayton Wade, Tylen Wallace, and Isaiah Washington. He said the favorites right now are Deontay Hardy and Tylen Wallace. Not gonna see that. Those are the two veterans uh, on the squad. Uh, a lot of the other guys are undrafted rookie free agents. Um, so with Deontay Hardy and Tylen Wallace already have an NFL experience. That will definitely give them the leg up because when you look at the Baltimore Ravens and their wide receivers, you, the guys who are locks are obviously uh, Rashad Bateman, Zay Flowers, Nelson Aguilar, Tez Walker. But after that, it's up in the air. Those last two spots are up in the air. And I figure like one will go to Deontay Hardy, who they signed to be a primary return man. But with Tylen Wallace and especially with the, the kick return rules, a lot of teams are expected to use two significant return men. So that could be where... Tylen Wallace fits in as well and he's already shown his stuff as a returner for the Baltimore Ravens he's like he's showing like hey I, I can do this too y'all just got to give me a shot so we'll see what happens with that uh at right tackle for the starter the competitors are Daniel Falele, Josh Jones who they signed as a free agent from the Texans Patrick McCarry and Roger Rosengarden who they drafted in the second round Jeff Rebick said the favorite right now is Roger Rosengarden I don't even think we need to get into any explanation about that uh it's obvious especially the other day hopefully it was just a one or one off for Daniel Falele but they said the other day like he was really struggling not even with losing to anybody in no one-on-one -on -one battles but he was just struggling dealing with the heat so if you're struggling dealing with the heat uh yeah we know it's extra hot it's been super hot outside but still, that's not a good sign for conditioning and whatnot. And that's not a good sign as far as how good or how bad somebody is taking care of their body, especially if it's all these other people and they're not struggling with it. So that's a tough look for Daniel Filele. So hopefully, again, it was just a one-off thing and he can come back for mini camp and training camp and he'll be right back in the mix. But somebody else who is in the mix is both starting guard spots, which are up for grab. Uh, the people in the mix are Sala. Ben Cleveland, Daniel Filele, Josh Jones, Patrick McCarry, and Andrew Voorhees. And the favorites right now are Ben Cleveland and Andrew Voorhees. I don't think that comes as a surprise to anybody, um, especially Ben Cleveland. Like, we've continued to talk about, you know how it goes. Like, there will be a Ravens player who they draft, and they get off to a slow start those first couple of years. They may show some flashes here and there, but in their last year in contract year, that's when they want to show out so they can get paid. And with Voorhees, he's somebody that he's been continued to be talked about because he got hurt right before the draft that dropped his draft stock down. The Ravens, they jumped back in the draft to pick him up. He had a red shirt year, and they, they knew he wasn't going to play last season. But this season was the season that they were banking on, and so far, so good. So, again, mini camp, but then training camp when them pads come on, that's when we're really going to see about everything. Now, a position that I often forget about is the third outside linebacker the competitors Malik Ham, Adisa Isaac, David Ajabo, Tavius Robinson and he said the favorite if healthy would be David Ajabo and then he talked about the third inside linebacker the competitors Chris Board and Josh Ross and he said right now the favorite is Chris Board and Chris Board got a lot of experience not only in NFL but specifically with the Baltimore Ravens and they brought him back 
this offseason. So we'll see how that fares out. And uh, the reserve cornerback roles. Uh, the competitors are Bump, Cooper Jr., Jalen Armour Davis, Kader Holman, uh, Christian Matthew, Arthur Millette, Trayvon Mullen, Trey Swilling, TJ Tampa, Darius Washington, Demarion Williams. That the favorites there are uh, Jalen Armour Davis, Arthur Millette, and TJ Tampa. Now, I can see Arthur Millette and TJ Tampa as the favorites for that one. Jalen Armour Davis, woo, we're going to see. We're going to see because he's dealt with a lot of injuries, and it's been unfortunate. You never want to see somebody like career just fall apart because of injuries, but he's dealt with a lot, and he's missed a whole lot of time. I don't think he would really be the favorite, but hey, this is Jeff Zrebic, not me, and he obviously got that inside information. Now, right here, the number three safety spot. Uh, he said the competitors for this are Bo Bray, Sanusi Kane, Trey Swilling, Jordan Tolles, and Ardarius Washington. The favorite, of course, from that group is Ardarius Washington. But Jeff Zrebic says what a lot of us have continued to say. We expect the Baltimore Ravens to still add somebody uh, significant as that third safety. I mean, I know who a lot of us want. Will we get them? Only time will tell. Now, speaking of that third safety position, we had an interesting question from my guy, Darren. He said, what's up, Engraven? I'm Darren. Hope all is well with you and yours. Oh, everything is great. Hope that everything is even better with you and yours. He said, we got to talk about this. We all know that there's a hole to be filled at that number three safety position. With us drafting Nate Wiggins, what would be your thoughts on letting Brandon Stevens move back to safety? As we remember, he was a safety coming out of college when we drafted him. I think this gives more reps to Nate Wiggins on the outside and allows players like TJ Tampa and Arthur Millette to see the field more. It also gives us some versatility at safety with Brandon Stevens' ability to cover and his athleticism. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Now, him making a permanent switch back to safety, I would say no, because we saw what he did last year at corner. I wouldn't want to mess with that. I would want to keep him as an outside corner. Let's see if he can build up that consistency that he showed us last season. Let's see if he can continue that. I will leave him right where he is. But there could be some plays, there could be some formation, there could be some packages where you do use him as a third safety just to switch some things up and to confuse an offense even more. Ooh, I really like this one. It came from my guy, Michael. He said, hey, man, many blessings to you and your family and the team. Keep it clean, family. Well, five teams were quiet the most criticisms by winning a Super Bowl. He said Dallas, Buffalo, Baltimore, Jacksonville, and Cleveland. Now, I would take Jacksonville and Cleveland off that list because nobody's really talking about them like that as far as like well i guess cleveland you could leave them up there but jacksonville nobody's expecting them to win the super bowl anytime soon but definitely i think the number one is dallas number one is dallas they america's team you could watch every single one of their games without even having cable you can see every single dallas cowboys game playoffs and all preseason all that stuff but they have continued to be thrust in the limelight in the spotlight and the expectations for them every single year are very high oh this could be the year that dallas cowboys finally turn around this could be the year that they finally get to the super bowl they build these nice teams these nice rosters and you know how jerry jones is dak prescott all the, the the heavy expectations that continue to be put on him every single year i think they would quiet the most people if they were to win a super bowl another one definitely the baltimore ravens for sure lamar jackson a two-time mvp they're like all right you don't want two mvps how about that super bowl mvp the baltimore ravens they paid you they're a team that has been in the mix year after year after year when are the baltimore ravens finally not only going to get over the hump of actually making it to the super bowl but winning the super bowl again especially if you have one of the best quarterbacks in the league same can be said about josh allen josh allen continues to be very very productive putting up uh excellent numbers year in year out uh, but the buffalo bills they've just been another team that just have not been able to cross that line as far as getting to the super bowl uh, so they will definitely quiet, quiet a lot of people as well. With Cleveland, I, I think if, if it weren't for the Deshaun Watson contract, then they would not be on that list. But since they gave Deshaun Watson that contract and they really reset the market with that, I could see why they are definitely on there as well. Now, when we talked about Jeff's Rebix column on the athletic from today, we skipped the part about the tight ends because there's really not any competition there. But my guy, Javo, had an interesting point. He said, listening to our guys, Purple Rain, shout out to my guy, Simply and Sutton. Uh, he said, they made an interesting point about our tight ends. With Andrew's new contract approaching and likely his contract as well, which tight end will the Ravens re-sign? We know Mark Andrews is Lamar's guy and likely might price himself out of Baltimore. So, who will you go after? Oh, that's that's a fun one right there. And I know the obvious answer would obviously be Mark Andrews. They got that crazy chemistry. But when Mark Andrews was out, <laughs> I said likely there's no slouch at all. But what I want to happen is I want the Baltimore Ravens to make it tough. 
I want them to make it hard on themselves. I want the decision to be made extremely difficult because that would mean both tight ends were doing their thing, both tight ends were going off, both tight ends were showing their stuff, and both tight ends were contributing throughout the entirety of the season, and they were making a huge impact like we know they both can, but hopefully this season they both will.